This week is devoted to continuous time Markov chains. These stochastic processes are the combination of a discrete time Markov chain and a random Sorjon time. Namely, we have as before a state space, the transition probabilities Pij, to which we add random Sorjon times, which are supposed to be exponentially distributed. Let's look at how the trajectory of a continuous time Markov chain is built. We start with an initial state i. The process stays there for a random amount of time, which is an exponential random variable of parameter lambda i. Then, with probability pij, it jumps to state j, and it stays there for an exponential random time of parameter lambda j then jumps with probability pjk to state k, where it stays for an exponential random time of parameter lambda k. And the process continues forever following these rules. Let's see now how it works for the MM1Q. Recall that we have one server, an infinite buffer, Poisson arrivals of intensity lambda, exponentially distributed service times, and the discipline is first in, first out. The process we are interested in is the number of customers in the system. This number changes only when a new customer arrives or when a service ends. Since there are no two simultaneous arrivals or simultaneous departures, the process can only increase or decrease by one unit at each change. This means Pij is zero if the gap between i and j is more than two. If we have i clients present in the system, the next event happens either when there is an arrival or when there is a departure. The next arrival happens in an exponential time of parameter lambda since the arrivals form a Poisson process of intensity lambda. The next departure happens in an exponential time of intensity mu. So, the next event happens at the minimum of these two time lapses, which, as we know, is distributed as an exponential random variable of parameter lambda plus mu. This means that lambda i is equal to lambda plus mu. The process jumps from i to i plus 1 if the arrival happens before the departure. In other words, if an exponential random variable of parameter lambda is smaller than an exponential random variable of parameter mu. Again, we know that the probability of this event is lambda over lambda plus mu. So, pi i plus 1 equals lambda over lambda plus mu. The process jumps from i to i minus 1 with the complementary probability, which is mu over lambda plus mu. So, pi i minus 1 equals mu over lambda plus mu. If i is 0, no departure can occur. So, the next event happens in an exponential time of parameter lambda. This means lambda 0 equals lambda and p0 1 equals 1. 